This week on Entertaining People, it's a classic American Sunday Soul dinner with chicken and dumplings and meatloaf and collard greens. Don't miss this. Come right back. I'm Porter William, and I've been entertaining, event planning, and cooking for over 25 years. Finally, I get to share my secrets with you. No matter if you have a one-room apartment or a grand-scale estate, we'll learn how to entertain from San Francisco to the beaches of Spain, from menu planning to tablescapes, I'll teach you how to entertain from the heart. From a memory, make a memory. Join me as we entertain the world one table at a time, next on Entertaining People. Well, welcome to Entertaining People. If this is the first time you're joining us, I'm Porter William, your host, and we teach you how to entertain worry-free every time in your own kitchen. Today, a great celebration, a celebration of American flavors, classic dishes. I'm gonna cook you a soulful Sunday dinner. Now, most cultures have a big meal at least once a week. Some cultures on a Friday night, sometimes it's a Saturday, but often in the States, and certainly the American South, it was a Sunday dinner. Now, my mother used to cook many, many different things, but the one that I'm preparing for right now is a chicken and dumpling, and we're gonna start with just a beautiful fryer, which I've had roasting. She always did lots of onion, lots of celery, and carrots, and we're gonna pick apart the meat from the bone, and we're gonna add it to a beautiful broth, and you see these gorgeous dumplings come together. The first thing that we wanna do is we want probably two to three large onions, and I want them really heavily, coarsely chopped, so nothing too fine, because they're gonna be stewing in that pot for as long as, long as you like, and stay on it all day. A lot of families used to put on their Sunday dinner before they went to church and they would head off to church and they'd come home and they'd have things all ready, ready to sit down and eat. So dishes that hold, casserole style dishes, dishes that are all baked in a single pot really is what this is all about. Our menu today is going to have, in addition to the chicken and dumplings, we're going to have an American meatloaf. I've got my own twist on it. I have this new fancy for these buffalo blue potato chips. They're really spicy base in the meatloaf is going to be our buffalo blue meatloaf. You're going to really enjoy this. After we have our onions in, you can discard those from your board. And we're going to do a rough chop on celery. Again, with a chicken and dumpling or anything that's going to stew, you really want nice large pieces. Look at this beautiful celery stock. Great produce available everywhere. I want these to be just about that big. They're going to be so nice and tender by the time they come out of the pot. We used to eat our chicken and dumplings with a fork. Some families eat them with a spoon. So this is a chunky chicken and dumpling. We're gonna add our celery. Now, earlier I was stewing the chicken and I think you saw me picking apart the different pieces. You want the chicken to be stewed until it's just finger tender, just falling off with a fork from the bone. And take that fantastic chicken meat. There's the breast right there. And I like to just flake it right on top with my hands. Don't ever cut this, just do a tear. Again, you want those stringy elements of the chicken meat all on the, on the plate with a really big bite of flavor. Okay, just the small bits and pieces. And remember that all the skin has been removed. We've got the light meat and the dark meat, that way everyone can have what they prefer. And then the last thing is gonna be our carrots. And I just got a little bit of help from my supermarket this time with some prepared beautiful carrots. Look at those gorgeous colors going in. Follow me over to the stove and we're gonna put this into our simmering broth. That's what we had earlier. That's everything that that chicken came from. And again, I just use my hands right in. Be careful, that's really hot. The chicken and the carrots are gonna go to the bottom of the pot. And then we can fill all of our beautiful celery. Oh, look at that. And the onion right on top there. I'm gonna bring the heat up. I'm not gonna do any seasoning at this point in time because I had a little bit of seasoning on the chicken when it was stewing. Put a nice tight lid on that. We're gonna wait till we hear that roll and boil. Probably about uh, five, 10 minutes, and then we're gonna turn it down and let it simmer. And the rest of it I'll teach you as we go. This week on Entertaining People is a classic American Sunday Soul dinner with chicken and dumplings and meatloaf and collard greens. Don't miss this, come right back. Well, there could be nothing more Southern than American collard greens. And today I'm actually gonna be doing some greens for you. Here inside is a ham hock. This is the smoky flavor 
that gives collard greens, mustard greens. There's a lot of different choices. In fact, if you can just find yourself a smoked pork chop or even a couple slices of bacon. This is really the fat element and it's also gonna add a lot of salt into the greens. I just put it in the bottom of the pan and then I fill my pan. If you don't have one of these fancy pot fillers, just take your pan over to the sink and fill it up. Now collard greens take a lot of space, a lot of volume, kind of like a spinach when you're cooking it fresh. So you wanna have a huge pot. Once we get just enough water in there, we're gonna get that ham hock covered. I'm gonna move it to my back burner. Fire that up. That should do it, just about right there. Let's put this back on the heat. So a really high heat because we're gonna to try to bring this to a boil and we wanna extract all those great smoky flavors and some of the fat. That's gonna be our grease element that's gonna help get all of those greens going. And what they call it in the South is pot liquor and that's all the rendered juices from that beautiful smoked ham hock, the water, everything's gonna to come together. Well, in this day and age, we have the great help of prepared collard greens and I've actually, once again, got some help from my grocery store. I'm gonna do, these are 12 ounce bags and we're having a sole dinner for six people tonight. I'm doing three 12 ounce bags and you typically have to do this in stages. You wanna get your first one in, don't let that guy get away. And then as high as you can possibly make that, fill your pot up. And in just a few moments, these are gonna cook down. I'm gonna add my third bag. So we're gonna actually have 36 ounces of raw cut collard greens. Just gonna cover them right now and move on to another really great Sunday recipe. Well, there are always treats for the kids and treats for the adults, but one of the things that I certainly learned years ago when I was on the road traveling through the American South is an American sweet tea. And it really is nothing more than about five regular tea bags. We're gonna start filling our pot up again. Okay, you'll wanna put that on a high heat and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply kettle boil just in a saucepan our tea bags. Now you tear off the paper and I like to just tie them in a knot. Don't let that straggler get out of there. Drop them in and we're gonna brew that tea with about, yeah, you heard me. This is not for any diabetics in the audience. However, I have made this with sugar substitutes and it works beautifully. We're gonna put the tea bags in and we're gonna end up with about a cup of sugar going to be the true, true sweet tea. The secret is we're going to bake this black tea as we brew it with the sugar at the same time. So we have a combination of a simple syrup, which is equal parts sugar to water, and then our tea is our flavor. All we're going to do is bring that to boil. Once it steeps, we're going to turn it off. It's going to sit here all afternoon. Then we're going to pour it over a big pitcher of ice, some fresh lemon, and for the big folks in the audience, I actually have a kicked up tea. It's got a little bit of Papa's recipe in it. When we come back, we're gonna check our collard greens, see how our chicken and dumplings are doing, then we're gonna move on to my mom's vanilla wafer and banana pudding dessert. I'll be right back. This week on Entertaining People is a classic American Sunday soul dinner with chicken and dumplings and meatloaf and collard greens. Don't miss this, come right back. Oh, buffalo blue chips, wow. Hot and spicy, just like this menu. If you're just joining us, I'm Porter William, this is Entertaining People, and today we're celebrating an American classic, a Sunday soul dinner. Every family had some type of Sunday dinner, and we're on to our second course, or third actually, on the main. We've got a chicken and dumplings. My mom's chicken and dumplings are on the stove, and they're in Auntie Carlina's pot, by the way. And I'm now getting ready to do a meatloaf. We've got some collard greens with a smoked ham hock that are stewing over there, and some sweet, sweet southern tea that's turning into the beautiful, beautiful elixir that it is. Now, just about everybody has their favorite meatloaf recipe, and I have to admit, I love using cornflakes or cracker crumbs as my starch, but lately I have fallen in love with these hot and spicy potato chips that are known just like a buffalo wing, it's a buffalo blue, so the flavor of the blue cheese with the hot sauce, believe me, this is all the salt you need when you're adding in this as your starch into your meatloaf. So they come in your basic bag, and what is really important to do is to pop a couple holes in the bag before you start crushing them up, because if you don't, they're gonna blow up everywhere. And we're gonna break up this entire bag 
of Buffalo Blue. I have friends who use tortilla chips, breadcrumbs, Italian breadcrumbs, seasoned breadcrumbs. I've got to tell you, this is really one of my favorites of all. When you get your bag open, take your knife, and we're going to want to dump all of those crumbs into the bowl. Boy, that looks great already. Just keep a few out for yourself and your guests when they arrive. With my meatloaf, I like two or three meats, and it typically just depends on what's available. So the meat market sent me over a pound of ground round and a pound of ground pork. We have the pork coming out first. I love it when things are prepared like this. And as it's going into the bowl, I like to just break it up with my hands, just so that we can start to get a little bit of uh, separation with the seasoning. And also a secret weapon I have for you. One to two spicy Italian sausage links. And I wanna show you the difference when you're buying them at the store. There's a spicy link. You can see how pink the color is on that. And here is just a regular flavored Italian sausage. Now these have a wonderful scent of fennel and you can definitely feel the fire in this. What I do is I take one of each and I just simply push the sausage right out of its casing and it's gonna fall right into your bowl. This is gonna give it a little element of pork. Of course, if you have a guest who doesn't eat pork, feel free to use a turkey sausage, which works out really well. It'll, it'll have the same flavor. In fact, you can actually make a turkey loaf if you like. It's a little bit on the dry side, so you need to really keep the liquid ingredients strong. I'm having a little trouble getting that one out. There we go, perfect. One and two. All right, so two sausages, two to hold back. What I like to do with those is I like to slice them and put them on the top. And then, of course, the main ingredient is our ground round. A nice, fresh ground beef that we've got right from the butcher. There it is, and we're gonna break that up. Look how good that is. I had this freshly ground, and I'm gonna start my first mix with my hands just by turning it towards me. There's only one way to make a good meatloaf, and that's with your hands. We're gonna get those worked in. As soon as I have it partially incorporated, I like to add two whole eggs right on top. And sometimes even a little bit of water. Julia Child, who was an amazing cook, often put some ice cubes in her hamburger so that they uh, stayed moist. I think their egg is gonna do exactly what we need to do. And I'm just gonna continue mixing. One of the techniques that I like to use is I like to pick up the meat and I use, like to use my knuckles to just kind of roll it down. And as you can see, the entire texture is becoming smooth. We have our ground round, we have our ground pork, our hot Italian sausage, and our mild all coming together, of course, with our buffalo blues. Let me wash my hands. All right, with clean hands, I'm gonna now add some of our herbs. And I actually, instead of using a, an Italian seasoning blend, I like to use a little herbs of Provence. You can use a tarragon, uh, an oregano, just a three season blend, whatever is easy. Again, no salt in this. You have plenty of salt with the chips. And the Tabasco flavor, the hot pepper flavor, is really pretty prominent, but you know me, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Probably about three shakes of my favorite Louisiana style sauce. And the next time we mix this, we're actually gonna mix this and get ready to go into the pan. So many tricks and, and uh, techniques as to how to make a good meatloaf not stick to the pan, but honestly, I've tried those specialty pans, I've tried the loaf pans, and my personal opinion is the best thing is just a great cooking spray. So I like to thoroughly spray my pan, and on the way in, I'm going to go with one last Big mix, wow, this is like playing in mud pies from being a kid. I think it'd be great to have like a meatloaf contest sometime. I'm gonna try to form that a bit in the bottom of my bowl and then turn it over, hoping you can see that there. And in one full swoop, we're gonna bring that loaf into its baking pan. Look how well that came out. 
I'm using the bottom of my bowl as actually the form. Now, I don't like to pack my meatloaf too terribly tight because I already know it's dense, but we do want it solid enough so that you can slice it in those big, thick slices and dress them up with some of the pan dripping, some ketchup, some red sauce, and of course, the best of all is a cold meatloaf sandwich the day after. Now, when we come back, I'm gonna have this all set. This is gonna go in a 325 oven for just about 40 minutes to an hour. You wanna check for doneness on a meatloaf. It's really important to tell that the inside is also done, not just the edges. I'm gonna pop this in the oven. When we come back, we'll check on our dumplings and all the other dishes that are coming out for our Sunday dinner. This week on Entertaining People, it's a classic American Sunday soul dinner with chicken and dumplings and meatloaf and collard greens. Don't miss this, come right back. We are back at it here at Entertaining People with that American classic of soul food. So far, chicken and dumplings on the stove top, collard greens with a ham hock. We have some sweet tea brewing. I just put a killer meatloaf that's made with those hot spicy potato chips in there. In fact, let's see how these things are doing. One of the great tricks of entertaining that I've learned over the years is you have to understand time and temperature, mostly because you want everything to cook at just about the same time. That means the stuff that takes the longest, you want to start cooking first, and the least, of course, at the end. So here are our chicken and dumplings. Oh, look at those beautiful pieces of celery and that home roasted chicken. We're going to continue to let this simmer because we're going to want this to thicken up. It's almost going to be like a gravy. And a great trick is just to add a couple tablespoons of flour with a little bit of milk. That'll help thicken up your broth. And let's see how our... There's the collard greens we were after. See that, how they've all floated? Now we want to work them down into that pot liquor. And if I can pull that up, I promise you, there is a ham hock down there. There we go. That's our beautiful ham hock covered with our collard greens, which is giving us all the flavor. Now remember, that was 36 ounces of fresh collards, and look how much they've already reduced. So remember that if you're cooking for a lot of people, collard greens can go for six, seven hours on the stove, and they're gonna just reduce down to a serving or two. All right, so that's boiling really heavy, and we have quite a bit of liquid here. What I'm gonna show you how to do is with a tempered glass, what I do is I just reach in, and I grab about a full cup of that broth. I'm gonna bring that back over to my board. Keep your flour handy. You're always gonna need it. We're gonna add just a little bit of flour to this. Very quickly, and with a fork, I just do what we often can call a slurry. Mix just basically, I also have a gravy uh, shaker, which is really good for this. You can see how thick that got. I'm gonna just add a tad of milk. The reason why I wanna keep it turning is so that it doesn't get lumpy. And that coming right back over into our chicken and dumplings. We're gonna put that in, and I want you to watch how those bubbles subside almost quickly, almost instantly. That's going to thicken up. We're gonna leave the heat up and let that reduce for just a second with the top off before we add our dumplings. Last thing we did over here on the hearth was our sweet tea, and it's a simple brew, and there it is. Now, do you remember when I talked about how black it's gonna get? We're gonna get almost a syrup consistency. Oh, that is a sweet, sweet tea of that beautiful sugar with the just the basic tea bag. Wow, I can smell the tea coming out of there and the sugar, and all that we really need to do right now is start to put together our dumpling mix. Dumplings are also, I think, kind of like a family legacy. You really do have to get them under your hand, just like baking a loaf of bread. Sometimes, actually, they've never really come out perfectly. My mother's come out perfect every single time. You want a dumpling light and airy, and it's gonna be a doughy top over the top of our chicken and dumplings. So what I have here is basically a couple cups of a pre-mixed uh, biscuit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. And I like my dumplings to be really thick, so I actually mix them just with a fork so I can control the consistency. That's thickening up on us. One of my favorite things is to add fresh parsley or even dried parsley if you don't have it into the batter. So we're gonna whip that to where it's almost spoon thick, like a spoon biscuit that we could drop on top. We can see how that's coming together. That looks perfect. We'll let that sit there right now. And then I'm gonna pull some fresh parsley from my board. And the way to chop this really quick is just to simply grab it, 
fold it over once and then fold it over again. Take your knife and you'll get a nice clean. Now these we do want in small teeny pieces. We don't want big bites of parsley. This is really just to give it flavor. Once you get to half of it, flip it and turn it again and continue. Watch those fingers chopping through that parsley. There we go. Let's cross over there. Fresh smell. Oh, so good. And I like that to go right into my batter. Okay, we're going to mix all of that in. And you can see that the biscuit mix is starting to activate just a little bit. And I can tell by the pull. There it is. That's the consistency you're after. So that when you pick up a big spoon, you can actually put it into your pot of chicken and dumplings. I'm going to let the dumpling batter just sit over here on the stove as this reduces and just check back. I'm going to look back every now and then and see how it's doing. But I want this to go down probably about another eighth in volume so that I know I've got a really thick, thick, beautiful broth. Tune in next time on Entertaining People as we finish our menu and greet our guest. You won't want to miss this.